want our girls back. Yes. But I can tell you, we can do it. Yes. Our military can do it. Yes. So nobody should come and say the Nigerian military does not know what it is doing. The good news for the girls is that we, can, we, we know where they are, but we cannot tell you. Okay, we cannot come and tell you military secrets here. Just leave us alone. We are working. We will get the girls back. Where they are held, can we go with force? If we go with force, what will happen? We can't go and kill our girls in the, in the, in the name of to get them back. We know where they are, but we can't tell you exactly what the Air Chief Marshal is saying in that report. Now, all of this brings to mind that point written by W. Y. Yeet, uh, the second coming, turning and turning in the wide name Jai, the falcon cannot hear the falcon, it. things fall apart and the center cannot hold, mere anarchy is set loose upon the world. We're talking about the statement by the general and finding out more as we join joined again by Victor Kai, a public affairs analyst, as well as um, Chuks Umoko. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for staying the course. Now, reports that we got this morning was that um, former President Olusha Gwambasajo is already ongoing in dialoguing with representative of Boko Haram, so to speak. Prior to that, we also had the NGF chairman and, of course, the governor of Niger State calling on one of the past leaders in northern Nigeria to rally other past leaders, about five of them, former presidents in northern Nigeria, to come together and dialogue and possibly negotiate. Let me start with you, Jukes. What do you think is the responsibility and the role of past leaders in all of this? The basically are the ones who are laid foundation for what we have here, uh, probably minus of And you know, um, I was in the sister television station and I was talking about um, our former president, Chief Olusha Gwabasanjo, and they, they started calling him, uh, calling me his son-in-law. And, <laughs> you know. But you need to take his history. People who do not have a history or who do not have a sense of history, they walk in darkness. His patriotic, his Nigerianness, his patriotism, and his whatever. In fact, you know that he's become a global figure. Mm. He goes to other places to resolve issues. You remember the last, the, the first person that made an attempt to resolve this issue a few years ago was Chief of Basanjo when he went to visit the then leader of this sect. I don't like calling that name. I have never done it. Now he's back again. And you know, there was a time there was an issue of a letter between the president and, and himself. So he's just a necessary decimal. The question to ask is, why is it that the leaders from the northern part of Nigeria have that kind of attitude that they have? They never show that patriotic whatever for us to see. This is what they've done in the past that I noticed as a young man. When it's time to negotiate for who will be president since independence, they always decide. You remember that in 1999, 1998, when there was need for transition, they decided there was need to pacify the Southwest. So they negotiated Abbasanjo into power. During Shagari era, they did the same thing. They always take a decision for all of us. Since this crisis started, I have not seen any one of them take a stand against this sect or call their governors to order. Now, for me, I think that they're showing me that they don't have any relevance in our national existence. All they wanted to just live a stupendous lifestyle on the enterprise called Nigeria, because it's only Nigeria as an enterprise that can sustain their, their stupendous lifestyle. No thriving enterprise outside of Nigeria state can fulfill their aspiration to live in large houses, built on a hill, mm -hmm. surrounded by high walls, where the people can come and visit them and do rank and be fed. And so when they are broke, they want to come back as president. And, and I think that Obasanjo should go, just go this alone. He's demonstrated that by the kind of letter he wrote the other time. Uh, it might not be palatable to, palatable to the president. The president might uh, has also replied. It might not be palatable to him. But two of them share a common destiny of being a former president and this man following suit. They should bury their differences. I mean, people quarrel and all that. But Nigeria should be very important to, to both of them at this time, that they can walk out an agreement where they can sit down and say, can we put a pass together? But these other people, they are gathering together. They have not shown any sign that they love this country 
to that a point where you can say, okay, I am 79 years old. If I die, good. But if not, I wear the gala. They have never demonstrated patriotism mm. outside of what they want. And they cause this problem because if they've developed, what is the cause of this problem? If you developed your people, if you build houses for them, send them to Arabic school or formal school, made roads for them, you have a huge desert area, area turn it into a city like they've done in in in, 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 in other places we won't have this crisis what, what gave this rise to this guy's complete absence of governance complete denial of your faith your faith tells you to not to steal no religion tells us to steal you have government officials that steal no religion including our traditional religion does not allow us to steal and so these youths lost complete confidence in our democracy lost complete confidence in our in our in our education because what are we getting from western education the ability to to ride away billions and for me i think that that's what give ultimately gave rise to all these things and so i think this is the right part to work on let our person just come in and salvage this situation because i tell you what he can do it i've always loved him i've read all his books he has his sentiments he has you cannot deny his patriotic zeal in fact, I so desired and loved him that I went to see him. And I was so fortunate. I, you can't believe it. I met him. So <laughs> I think that that's, that's the man for us. Because if you can go to South Sudan, if you can go to all the parts of the world to go and sort out political issues, I believe you can do it for us. We know where they are kept. Uh, the confession of a general. That's the thrust of our discussion today. And I just quickly want to intimate you with our social media feeds again. Uh, on Facebook, at www.facebook.com forward slash call TV news. And as well as Twitter at call TV news NG. And you get to also see more of that on YouTube, previous edition and current edition of Call Digest. It's youtube.com forward slash core TV, leave a space and news. Now to you now, Victor, uh, there's a lot of um, condemnation as regards the statement made by the Air Chief Masha uh, from Uche Chukwemerije. And just yesterday, the United States is also raising its voice against its decision to have made that information public. Do you think this will affect the international commitment and the, you know, the the ongoing cooperation between Nigeria and the U.S. in the fight against terrorism in Nigeria? Um, you, will, you will permit me to take my earlier, my opening statement a step further. It was a careless statement, not thought through, it was given out of overzealousness. You may be a general, but if you're not trained to speak, you shouldn't be speaking, especially to the public, which is why corporate organizations have PR specials, which is why the federal government, for instance, is thinking about spending such a stupendous sum as much as $800 million to get a PR firm to show up its image. What the firm is going to do is decide what you say, where you say, how you say it, the kind of events you attend and what events they need to create around you and things like that. It was very careless. I told you the people who came were people who were pro. And so in that overzealous they started talking. Now you can see the US reacting. They said it earlier. They were not going to share intelligence with us. Intelligence that they don't have, they are not privy to. Is what out of zealousness they are coming to share now. I'm sure the Americans are told that okay, we finally located them. And then next you go to town. You want, what, what gains? What do you want to achieve with that? Remain quiet and do the work. I said earlier, I said less is more. Do your work. And then the results will show. Will that in any way affect um, the international uh, commitment that it, we have? Well, what it would do is, um, you know they said they were not going to share all the intelligence they had with them before. Mm. It will make them share even less. What you might find out at the end of the day to the chagrin of Nigerian military is that, and let me make that prediction here and now, it may not be, it may not be the Nigerian army that will rescue those guys. I don't know what army will cross over the territory to do this, but I doubt if it will be the Nigerian army that will rescue them. If they're going at this rate, it doesn't make sense. I'm a supporter of the army and I'll continue to support them. I think they're doing a great job. 
and we have lost many unfortunate young men in the fight and I think we need to give them all the encouragement but we have been careless and we're still being careless keep quiet and walk don't tell me what you're doing show me what you're doing that's what I expect from you. Now, there have been, there have been a lot of questions asked, and um, it seems like um, there have not been answers. Now, questions like, um, one of the questions like, um, who is feeding these girls? Uh, where they get their food stuff from? And um, the, the, one of the videos released by the sects in the early part of this month, we saw over, the, over 200 girls um, wearing hijab. Now, the question is, who handled the contracts? Now, another question to be answered is, uh, this Boko Haram sects carry uh, over um, tw uh, 50 to 100 vehicles. How do they get those cars filled? And now they have internet service where they upload their videos, uh, you know, take it to the world. Uh, and that question is, who supply them with internet service? Now, this brings us to the big question that why is it very difficult for the Nigerian army? Because um, a lot of people have really lost hope. With the, uh, as far as most Nigerians are concerned, the fact that they know where these girls are is not, is not, is nothing to hold, uh, to hold on to. Now, why is it hard for us to really detect these girls and rescue them, looking at the fact that these things on ground are something that we can easily track? It is, um it's, it's many things put together. First for me is absolute lack of leadership, strong-willed leadership. And you know that leadership has its characteristics. Leadership must be very stubborn. Leadership must be very knowledgeable. Leadership is very discerning. For instance, if you say something to me, I don't have to take it, but I can go. And you heard of Asanjo say so many years ago, um, you can advise, but the decision to take what you said, those are characteristics of, of leadership. Leadership is very knowledgeable. He knows everything. Now, you are my advisor. It's just so that I can say, confer with you when it's necessary. There are so many characteristics of a, a leader that I can give to you. So that is absolutely lacking here. That's number one. Number two, if leadership admission, one, it means that he does not understand the dispensation in which we live in. We basically live in the same generation. And the age that we live in is called information age. Now, a lot of people are on Facebook, Twitter, and on. They're not able to tell the age. It's an age of information. Information age or slavery age. And you're not able to connect. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to have that kind of problem. So, for instance, let me give you an example. If I'm the governor of this state, and you are my advisor, and I appear to you to be very vulnerable. You're not going to take me serious. I mean, we can sit in a meeting, have our chit chat, and all that. When you go out through the door, you just assume this is going to high take riches, sir. Do you understand? Now, it's going to, you are going to be dealing with me based on your perception of who I am, how knowledgeable I am, and how I'm able to point at the direction at which we should go in terms of policy, in terms of who I recruit, in terms of what direction, you know, all kinds of things. Having said that, the reason we have the man probably said they have found these girls is because i suspect a lot of foreign countries have sent in troops and all that and what are they bringing it's not the human beings that they're bringing they're bringing technology they're bringing information tools to enable you find these girls because as i sit in my house or in my office and i'm wondering these girls are not granites that you can put in the car if you move you with there must be people that would have seen them and all that and all that the next point is how much patriotism do we have? These people who are working with, you know, in the some of the people in the army and other organs of uh, security. Arm. I mean, how patriotic are they? That's number one. Number two. Number three. I'm, I'm going to stop at there. Number three. Nigeria has not treated a lot of us well. Nigeria is supposed to provide education for us, provide housing for us, provide roads for us, provide the basics for us. Now, if I wanted more. I should just go and work hard and add to what government has provided for me. Now, you know that if you're a woman, and there are women who are listening, if you are married to a, a very bad husband, huh, and the man dies, the woman will be very happy. So what has happened is that because Nigeria has not been fair to a lot of us, there's a complete disconnect between citizens and the nation. So you can take up arms against your country. Now, that is very wrong. But that's what will make a man be throwing bombs around. If you love your nation to a, to a certain level, you can't do that. Are you following me? So there's a disconnection. Why somebody will see those girls and not report, or they will report to you? Don't forget that we had a report that before these girls were taken, 
that four hours before this incident, this matter was reported. Now, are you saying Nigerians are holding information from the government? That's what I'm explaining to you, that some Nigerians who have been badly treated by this country, who have been badly treated by politics, who has been badly treated by leadership, who have not benefited anything in a state, in a, in a nation that is so endowed. You know what Nigeria is? A country that is so endowed with human resources, with natural resources. If you combine the resources that America and Britain are endowed with and combine them together, that of Nigeria exceeds what those people have. That's why you see the Yubos troop into this country. And that's the success of the MDGs, because the last MDG goal says global partnership for development. With all the insecurity issues we have in this country, you still have people like Gordon Brown and all these people coming here. Why are they coming here? They know the amount of wealth that are in government houses all over the Federation. So they take a lie. For instance, one of the lies they've been peddling in the last one year, by July will be about a year they've been peddling those lies, is that we have, have 10.5 million uh, children out of school. I've gone to TV stations all over the Federation explaining that that's not possible. I've done a survey for, on that project for River State. I can prove it anyway. But you know, they come here because they know that if, because they have white skin, if they go to Asso Rock, they'll be listened to. If they go to government house around the whole state, they'll be listened to. But I have practically gone to the streets to do the counting in River State, hoping that other states will approach us. Approach us. Hoping that uh, Lagos State, for instance, and I've written a letter to Lagos State and saying, look, I need to do a survey for you in Lagos State and show you the number of children that we have out of school and show you the number of children that are absenting themselves from school. We're also approaching Ogun State now, asking them to allow us to do a survey for them. They will not do it with us. They will prefer that a white man would do it. Now, why, why is that so? It's because Nigeria is so in doubt. Nigeria is so in doubt that they come here and they say, I want to do the things that I want to do for my people. And our government officials will give them the contract. Why? Because they are white-skinned people. Now, the point here is that Nigeria has not treated some people well. And those people are the ones causing this problem. Right? For instance, you join a political party. You want to contest a presidential election. And you are a, uh, Victor is a sitting president. I want to go to the primaries with him to go and contest to get a ticket. He calls his, because he's the sitting president, he gets his men in, my politi in our political party that we all belong to. And they, and they amend the p political party constitution. And I'm, this I'm, I'm disqualified. Now, all of us sitting down here, we don't pay attention to such little issues. Because the question is, how did they get money to fund this thing? It's people who have accumulated so much wealth from our resources that are funding this project. You just established now, Victor. He just but if you don't pay attention to that, what I just said, mm -hmm. now that... When a political party, it can be APC, it can be PDP, we need to pay attention to the internal democracies. Because it's disgruntled members and the disgruntled members of citizens that are so upset with the system. i give you another example that I, 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 I want you to take away. Currently, there's a matter in court that a political party won against INEC, saying you cannot disqualify, you cannot uh, deregister this political party. You got a judgment. As I'm speaking to you, instead of I neck to go to court and say no, we are going to recontest this matter. Three months elapsed. I, I neck didn't do the same thing. Elections are taking place all over the place. That political party has completely been ignored, even with with a with a court case. Meaning that you and I cannot go to court and obtain justice. Now, if that kind of group takes up arm against country, it will be because a Nigerian institution is instigating insecurity. Now we need to pay attention to those little, little things. Because these guys that are doing this thing, they are Nigerians, but the system has not just helped them. We need to pay attention to our democracy, the structures of democracy, justice, and political party activities are very essential. Provision of life amenities. These are little, little things that can make a man lose. I just told you that a woman who has a terrible husband can rejoice if the man died. I said, this man is out of my life. <laughs> you just uh, established the fact that certain people are losing faith in Nigeria. You now, just recently, the federal government signed about 968.12 uh, is a billion naira now for security to fight against Boko Haram. Now, what would wonder what the right step for government should be at this time? Is it pump that money into welfare for people in northeastern Nigeria? If they do that, we're also faced with another challenge of corruption and impunity, which you established earlier, that was the root cause of the challenge in northeastern Nigeria. The big question is what way to go for the government at this time? 
In the course of the discussion earlier on, I chipped in when it was what I said we are reactive rather than proactive. Security is not a one-way street. Security is, you know, a lot of factors put together. Um, if you put a security guard in front of your house, you have employed, quote unquote, you have put security there. Yeah. And if the guy is hungry, I don't know what security you have, okay? If you say you have put, um, you have bought, um, you have security cameras, a bulletproof vehicle and whatever, and you are the only rich man in your community, everybody is starving. I don't know what security you have put in place because you're going to build an army of disgruntled people like you talked about. There are so many factors to look at in the Northeast. One factor a lot of people are not talking about is the ecological factor. There is a lot of migration. This is putting pressure. Our immigration from that side to the rest of the country is putting a lot of pressure on the other side. Settlers versus indigents. People are leaving their place because they can no longer, the animals are dying, the plants can't grow there anymore. Um, ecological funds are not being put to use. We should be growing forests in the north. Okay? We should be, there should be reforestation in that place. I was in, was it Sokoto? And to a very large extent, I must say I was impressed. I saw a lot of trees in the city itself. I didn't go out and all that. And, and I would say to myself, I said, you know, it would be difficult in that, and you will notice that it's one of the secure places. It's not just because it's so tiny, it's there. But people there have no need to really go out that much because somehow they are not under the scorching sun and their things are not, you know. So we need to look at ecology. We need to look at the economy. We need to look at issues like he has talked about, this going to people. And so whatever it is we're talking about, whatever money you pump, if you give it to the military, they will waste their lives because the people who you're going to uh, you, you, you put the military men there to go and fight, and the people there are hungry people. They, the, the people that are, you are fighting against, if they are richer, they can induce them. And so they will sell to the highest bidder. You think that money should have gone into the economy of those states? Uh, it's not so much the economy of the state as much as thinking about what security is holistically and deploying accordingly. Let's get back to the statement of the chief of the first staff. He, he said on Monday that some arms recovered from insurgents showed clearly that some people outside Nigeria were fooling the violence with the aim of destabilizing the nation. Now, he said, and I quote that, they are fighting us. They want to destabilize our country, and some people in this country are standing with the forces of darkness. We must salvage our country. We must bring back sanity to our country. Don't you think it's high time that the federal government and the Nigerian military start calling names, not um, regarding who's Oxus guy? Okay, let me just quickly give us some information here. Uh, Lamido of Adama at the National Conference made a statement. Let me put it in pidgin English. You know, like when I kill myself, me, I can go to Cameroon. My kingdom extends beyond Nigeria. I don't know if we recall that statement. That statement is not peculiar to him alone. As a matter of fact, you have governors, past, maybe some present, including, <laughs> including heads of state, past, or head of state, past, that have roots in some of these countries. There are governors who spend weekends in Niger, in this country. There are families and relations across the border. If anything happens to this country, they have nothing to lose. The homogeneity of the border communities, particularly in the north, has made it so porous that um, when you talk about complicity, it's not a big issue. Because those border communities and those places, there's a lot of infiltration. The commitment is sometimes divided between two countries. There's religion on the one hand, loyalty. There's a tribal loyalty. There's just filial affiliation with some of these people. And don't forget, many of these countries are not happy that Nigeria is so-called the giant of Africa.
You had Mr. Venny open his, permit me to say, big mouth. I was talking the other day. Um, a lot of them, and Libyan Gaddafi, <laughs> who uh, is no longer allowed to find out whether his uh, wish will come to pass or not, uh, did not hide his disdain for Nigeria's size and power and image. South Africa is demonstrating maturity. But I'm not, I, cannot, I cannot vouch for the fact that they are necessarily happy that we are such a big power. Now, what you find is you are surrounded by enemies. The reason these things can happen is that people can strike here and go to the next country, and your soldiers cannot go into those countries. What are they providing? They're providing, uh, you know how it is as children, where you go, you have a big brother behind you. You go, you slap somebody, and you run behind that one. And that person dare not come to you. Because of respect for international boundaries and all that, if these people strike and go to Cameroon, you cannot go into Cameroon. That's another territory. It's like entering an embassy, you enter another country. If somebody comes to strike you on the streets of Lagos and enters an embassy, no matter what, you cannot go there. But there was a Paris Security Summit where heads of all these neighboring states came together and what? united in one voice to fight Not for voice. Sahara. What agreement did you sign? It's not the voice. What agreements did you sign? What agreements do you have with them? That is key. If you don't have such agreements, it's not about what you say verbally. You need to have treaties, okay? And it is only those treaties that can put and you can hold them to it. But right now, Chad can say, well, I don't know about what, I don't know what you're talking about. Nisha can say, well, you say people come here, I'm not aware, I didn't see anybody. Cameron can say the same to you. It's all right. Chooks, what most Nigerians can deduce from the CDS is that, okay, we know where they are kept, we can use force. What's, what most people can deduce is negotiation. But the question that comes to mind uh, is, will negotiation equal to cease fire from the Boko Haram sect? Uh, negotiation is a place to start from. I've always, uh, I'm a believer in negotiation. I, I believe in negotiation. I believe in compromise. Compromise is a major component of, of negotiation. Getting to negotiate. I mean, if I have a spat uh, with my brother here and we can bury our pride and agree to sit down, beautiful. And that, that's for me, see, is very, a, a very great uh, step. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when two people or a group of people or nations are fighting and all that, you get to a point where you can shake and say, look, let's talk. Even between spouses, it's a very great point. Um, I, I I think that what my only worry uh, is that if a, an office was established as a communication center for this uh, uh, activity that is going on, how that what he said tallies with what would have come from that office, I don't know. But like I said, I do not have the complete context with, uh, from which he said what he said. But I think that it probably has two sides to it. But the side that I see is the fact that the Boko Haram people will get to understand that, look, these people know where we have kept these girls. You know, and the reason that this happened is because maybe there's so much pressure, the Americans have come in, the whatever people have come in, and we have become vulnerable, then they can agree because there's need for negotiation. And you know that this has been on for a long while. Um, I remember that the first committee that was set up didn't achieve much, you know. So maybe this revelation will make them want to sit down. When you talk about negotiate. negotiation, I wanted to bear in mind that the last attack we reported that happened yesterday, we saw Boko Haram members putting their flags. Now that seems to give us a different definition to what we've known. It sounds like secession. Yeah. Uh, does that fall under the poverty of negotiation as well? You see, the thing, the thing we must now understand about this whole thing is that Nigeria is a beautiful country, endowed and rich. So whatever flag you want to host, what they are quarreling with, they're just, you know, when you somebody shows you resentment, you know, they're upset about something, they're not happy about something, and all the things that is going on on TV and all the whatever are just our conjectures of our mind until we get to see them sit down. So if you come and hoist a flag in front of my house, you're just you're just displaying your resentment against me. When we finish, you remove your flag. What is important is that leadership needs to be provided. Because you see, one of the things that people are not telling you is that this is what we have done for our people. When people when somebody wakes up and tell you 
don't want uh, Western education and all and all that. There must be a reason. We have had education since how I many uh, decades ago? You know, what have we achieved with it? What have we achieved with it? I mean, I, I, I mean, I have a family. You go and learn a, a trade. I have to stop somebody from making something in my house. You spend money to go and learn a trade. And that thing is not bringing an income. And I do not even have a quarrel with the fact that that project is not bringing an income. I just quarrel with the fact that it's taking your time. And time is a major factor in our existence. You don't waste your time chasing that type of thing. Because you can spend the same time either sleeping. And sleep can bring you to a place where you can have a dream or come up with an idea, or you can read. And that's what I prefer to do in, in my organization. It's either you're sleeping, put your head on the table and sleep. You know, get enough sleep, get up, take a book and start reading, or you walk. The All argument right. so, of uh, proponents, uh, let me just quickly come to you now, okay. Victor, of no negotiation, people who do not believe in negotiation, is that if we go ahead to negotiate with this group, then what, um, what assurance do we have that another group from another ethnic nationalities will not spring up? Oh, they will come. Uh, because there are many people who, like you've established earlier, who have needs and yearnings from government in Nigeria. Okay. Um, before answering that question, let me just add very briefly to something he said. Even if you go to some Zambisa forest today and you rescue these girls, or it turns out, however, and you kill Shekau, don't forget that that is only one location. That is called that the 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 headquarters. The headquarters, so called. That's what the perceived headquarters. It is from that same place that don't, the bombings are not happening there anymore. We have them in Jos. We have them in Kano. We just had them in Yubi. This war has only just begun. Okay. So, if you finish Abisa today, it's not the end of the problem. We need to tackle it at the root. Now, the issue of whether to negotiate or not. I recall during the last, the last time I was here, and on several other programs, I've said it that um, we, we allowed them to decide, to begin to dictate now, because they have a bargaining chip. Unfortunately, you have very little choice. If you don't negotiate, either way, we are losers. If you negotiate and these girls are brought out, you gain the girls, but you lose. In the sense that, well, it might make you popular, but um, you will have to trade in one way or another, okay? Which is not bad for negotiation, but they have gained something which they would ordinarily not have gained. If anything happens to these girls, you are not in a better position either. Now, the argument of those that are saying we do not need to negotiate with these people, the reason for that argument is simple. There is no guarantee that if this happens, that Masop, for instance, or Ment, or any other group, cannot do the same tomorrow, and also pick soft targets, just like this, and then force you not just in negotiation table, but on your knees. They will give you a chair for that negotiation. So it's, it's, it's a bad position to be in, OK? If they can do this with, a clinical, with clinical precision, the better for us. That's why I wish they were not talking. If they can find a way to, to smoke them and separate them from the girls or infiltrate, this is a strategy that can be used as well. There's no reason why. And the army and the... SSSR. They've done it, you know, in the past, where you embed, you get somebody, you know, to get, you know, you begin to penetrate the the setup, you know, enter the. And believe me, they've been doing something. Like that. That's what they need to do: get in there, like their members, stay with them long enough to earn the trust, give information when necessary, for as long as it will take to find the. If you can get into an influential position. You can even separate the girls from the people. Now, sorry, quickly, let's, let's look at the involvement of the international community. Uh, it's over 10 days uh, we've got them in Nigeria, uh, Mr. Chuk. So far, would you say their, their presence in this country has been very, very impactful so far? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they're not just going to come and give you the result. You know, they, they're going to come in and do their own strategy, set up their communication hall and all that. You know, it's going to take a while. But, Definitely, you can you can see it, you know. Um, the information that they have the girls, 
I suspect it is as a result of the collaboration between the uh, foreign allies and our own military. You know, collaboration is very important. Cooperation is very important. Partnership is very important. Absolutely, I'm already seeing the effect, and I, I can, I, I can, I've convinced myself that in a, in a very short while, we will be able to see the final result because uh, you okay. will need them to be able to negotiate. Finally, how how helpful would you say this information that we got from the CDS is to the traumatized parents of the abducted girls? It's just going to, um, I, you know, I agitate them. Okay, if you've seen the girl, so, you know, because like I said, I have to just, um, put myself in the position. I will be, I'll be agitated. I'll be wondering why haven't you told us? You know, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions and probably just hope that somebody will be around me counseling me and supporting me and all that. Um, but but I, I think that to a large extent, it will bring hope to them. So now that you found them, what are you doing and all that? And you need subsequent information and all that. So that's why I will not outrightly, because I don't have a complete contest in which the man made his statement. He says that I don't know if he had the approval of the partners or our center, communication center to say, okay, speak to these people. I don't know. I just saw him on TV. So I'm going to give him the benefit of that. Uh, by thinking that he knows what he was doing. Maybe that will assuage the minds of the parents who are agitated, who are asking questions. Half a, half a, half a. You don't know what it means to have your child mm. being taken hostage. Okay, okay. finally, before we, before we wrap up this program, uh, Mr. Victor, do you, do, you, do you think Nigerians really need updates from the El Masha every time they get information, just, um, you know, just probably... Uh, to do you think it's very necessary for for them to be given especially an putting especially yourself have the security issues involved in, in the issues of the parents as well would you say they need that information now or it, it will have a better not to have communication it? is very important mm. the the parents it's important to have to assuage their fears by letting them know that okay we seem to have an idea okay. where these girls are and we're working very closely and we're doing everything that we can. Um, I do not, I think that a well-articulated communication Absolutely. strategy is, is important. People should not just talk. There must be one voice and that voice should be a, a, a how do I put it, an aggregation of whatever the strategy is because, you know, the propaganda is a weapon of war, warfare yeah. and propaganda is not loose cannon talking. Is about, you know, you can say it to destabilize the enemy, you can say it to confuse the enemy, and all of that. And so it must be well articulated, it must be purposeful, it must be directed, but it must also be result oriented. It must elicit a desired reaction, both from the public, from the enemy, and from all stakeholders. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for finding time to join us today. We've been speaking with Victor Kai and, uh, of course, Chick Suwoko, and it's been for, it's day 44 after the oh. abduction of these girls, 44 days. Now, I was speaking earlier on the show yesterday that even if you go to a hotel room, I mean, somewhere a bit more comfortable, you know, than where you stay, the fact that you're not within the confines of yeah. your home, Familiar you know, at, at times you don't get to use the convenience, at times you don't <laughs> sleep where. And then you now talking about young girls spending 44 days in the hostile community, then it, it calls for a lot of sober reflection. Absolutely, it calls for a whole sober reflection. I, I can imagine what they're going through. You, you're right. Sometimes when you go to you know, an unfamiliar ter terrain, uh, you, you just, at, at the point, if you, if you get comfortable in the first two, three days, uh, uh, you just want to go home. And you're then yearning for home. You, you're yearning for home. And this, this girls, for girls, for God's sake, they're quite young. I really hope that uh, something comes out of it. And secondly, we are hearing another report from uh, an online news um, cable that um, one of the girls have escaped. Uh, one of the that's one of the over 20 girls kidnapped as uh, uh, you know she escaped but um they're trying to hide the identity of the girl and uh, of course uh, maybe she might just um give the nigerian army the all the, the information the that we need um, mm. to uh, rescue the other girls but that's been the the program for today we'll be back again tomorrow with another bomber topic of discussion don't forget send your tweets and of course follow us on facebook and you can also see our programs on our youtube channel just go there and just all those packages we have for you tomorrow god willing we should be able to take some of your response from our social media my name is brownson wana and i am nifemi oguntoye thank you for watching
Nigerians continue to Night, travel the in city of Lagos wins a dog as all rules to you on Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. A federal high we course. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news Thank spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24-hour news station.